ッタラッタラッタラッタラッタラッタラッタラッタラッタラッタラッタラッタラッタラッタラッタラッタラッタラッタラッタラッタラッタラッタ Um, here we go. Just some classic 2D Mario action. This is actually prior to Super Mario Bros. Wonders release, is my favorite 2D Mario game. But of course,、uh, Mario Bros. Wonder was so good. I、mm, think that one's my favorite now at that point. But you know, classic NES Mario. This is where it's at. Alright, l hopefully the brighter colors don't really mix up with my recorder, but you know. It is a Funky Monkey Friday. Alright. Do 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 Here in 1 2, something that's kind of interesting is that you can actually get infinite lives here if you just jump, stomp, jump, stomp. And then I'm only going to get like one or two just to show it off, but yeah, if you hold A as soon as you land and then you can use the raccoon to get it, then you can get one ups infinitely in that section. I'm not going to abuse it though because this game is not really that difficult. Well, actually, it is because it was made for. You know, the hardcore people. And if you think I'm lying, no, in Miyamoto's own words, this was supposed to be for hardcore platforming Mario enthusiasts back in 1989. Whereas、um, this game's sequel, Super Mario World, was supposed to be、um, geared more for beginners or casual players. Which,、uh, I don't know. I, I'm. On the side of the debate, I'm more of a Mario 3 fan myself. I know a lot of people like Super, love Super Mario World, and don't get me wrong, I love Super Mario World too. It's one of my favorite games. But, well, I, I kind of flip flop between Mario 3 and Mario World. Because, so, well, I mean, I guess it's a different feel. Like, sometimes I feel like playing Mario 3, sometimes I feel like playing Mario World. Um, speaking of Super Mario World, actually,、um, I got a Super Famicom today, which is pretty nice.、Um, I have、uh, three games with it. It's Super Mario Bros. 4, which is Super Mario World here in the US, but it was called Mario 4 in Japan. So it's gonna, well, it was subtitled Mario 4 in Japan. It's still a Super Mario World at the end of the day. I got Donkey Kong Country, which is titled Super Donkey Kong, which is. A name I definitely did not expect. I actually did not know that little piece of trivia that outside of the United States,、um, it was actually called Super Donkey Kong and not Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> and here we got our instance of a warp whistle. This will actually help us warp through the world. I'm not actually going to use it, I just wanted to show it off because. You can't have a Let's Play of Mario 3 without showing off the Warp Whistle location. I mean, come on. This game doesn't matter which chest you choose, the item is already predetermined as soon as you start the game. Alright. Okay, this level is a more athletic、um, type level. Now, what's interesting about this stage is that there's actually a prize if you manage to collect 44 coins within this stage. I'm gonna try and do,、uh, and do it.、Um, if I don't, then I'll just tell you what the prize is. I've been able to do it pretty consistently so far, but. You know, I could always mess something up. Which, you know. If you mess up, you just try and try again. Except if it's in this game, you just. Brush it off. Oh shoot, I might have actually messed up now that I said that. Probably. You need to be really, like, adamant about getting 
all the coins in that block right there. If you don't know our time base, as soon as you hit the coin the first time, then it'll um, continuously wear down time until you hit it again. And it looks like I got it. So you get this white toad house. Hello, you found my shop of strange and wonderful things. You get a P-Wing, which is basically the raccoon tail, except you're always able to fly. Um, so uh, I guess I should explain this. New to this game, um, starting from... It has all the traditional Mario Brothers 1 power-ups, which, like, right here has the Fire Flower. You can still shoot twi uh, twice before you can um, shoot again. You can have a maximum of two fireballs on screen. Um... I'll keep the fire flower for now. There's the standard Super Mushroom, which just uh, makes you grow to Super Mario instead of regular Mario. And then there's the Starman. Those are the three returning power-ups, but this game has so many more power-ups, which is probably why I like it a lot more than... Well, not a lot. I don't... Like I said, I flip-flop between this one and Super Mario World, but... Um, one of the reasons I like this game a lot is it's sheer diversity of power-ups. Like, in Mario World, you really only have one new power-up, which is the Cape Feather, and you have Yoshi Mechanic, which is great for that game, now go, don't get me wrong, but in this game, you got so many more power-ups than in any other Mario game. At least I feel. Maybe, maybe New Super Mario Bros. Wii rivals it? I don't know. Or maybe Mario Wonder, because Mario Wonder has also a great selection of power-ups. But in this game, one of the new power-ups we've just seen here is the um, Raccoon Tail power-up, which lets Mario uh, wag his tail to attack enemies and also allows him to fly if he runs on a, a stretch for long enough. You see that little P meter down there, right below Mario right there? That is a meter if you run fast enough for, long, uh, for a long period of time that will fill up gradually and then if you're just normal Mario, it will just make you jump higher, like here. You'll see Mario, instead of having his hand above his head, he is going to have his hands to his side and just jumping a little bit. Um, he'll jump further and higher, but if you have Raccoon Tail Mario, you will um, be able to fly for about three seconds, maybe five. It's not too overpowered. It's not like the, the Cape Feather from Super Mario World now. If you want overpowered flying ability, that's where you look. But yeah, um, the P-Wing in this game is actually the infinite flight power. And um, interestingly enough, originally, while this game was in development, that the P-Wing was actually... Oh crap, I kind of wanted to keep the Fire Flyer, but you know what, it's fine. The P-Wing is actually supposed to be what the um, actual Cape Feather did, or Cape Feather, uh, Raccoon Tail did. But um, they changed it in development because it would have made the entire hard work of the level designers pretty much useless because you could just fly over everything, which I don't think I don't think I need to say out loud that it was a welcome change. I mean, obviously you don't want your entire game just based on mashing A. <laughs> that would have been kind of ridiculous. But you know, standard Mario fare: you jump, you stomp on enemies, you. Um, go through eight worlds just like in the first game except unlike the first game There's actually more than four stages per world like as you saw in this stage they were in this um, world There were six normal stages one uh, Fortress stage and we're gonna see here a new type of level that was introduced in Mario 3 one of my favorite types of levels in Mario um, Let's see what we get we get another fire fire nice Here we're gonna see our first instance of this type of level. Oh, it's terrible! The king has been transformed! <coughs> Jeez! <coughs> I promise never to make that voice again. God, alright. Alright, here we have, if you've played any other Mario, 2D Mario later than this, this might seem familiar to you unless you played, like, I don't know, Super Mario Brothers DS or uh, Super Mario World. 
This is the airship level, which is a level that will not only auto scroll from left to right, but it'll also um, bob up and down. It's um, infamous for having a lot of bullet bills, a lot of cannonballs, sometimes the bombs, but in this particular airship, there's not. Um, these levels, although slow, they're really uh, a fun test of your platforming skills. I like them a lot. This first stage isn't really that bad. Um, I believe there's nothing at the end of this one, but I believe of the ends of Airship 3 and 5, there's going to be power-ups there, so you want to wait till the screen scrolls all the way. Here we have our first Koopaling boss fight, which is Larry Koopa. Larry Koopa is just going to be jumping around shooting um, magic magic at you with his rod. He's really not that bad. Once you defeat him, collect the rod, and boom. That is the end of World 1 of Super Mario Bros. 3. That was really fast, but don't worry, not all the episodes are going to be that fast. I kind of do want to divide all the episodes into worlds. I don't know if, if the videos start to exceed more than 15 minutes, then I'll cut them off mid-world, but I want to try and keep them to worlds. Princess Toadstool. Now, I never knew this as a kid, but um, every time you collect one of these letters after each world, that a sticker that she uses at the end of the uh, letter is actually a power-up. You get that power-up for beating that world. Alright, so now if we move on to World 2, which is the Desert World. Next time on Mario Brothers 3, we're going to go ahead and beat the Desert World. See you guys next time.